Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that makes me feel better as well. I still wear heels, I still wear short. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Jang's Food Workshop. I'm Chin. This is my mum Chu. Yes, Chu's here today. And Thumbs this, up. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. Huh? <laughs> and this is Nathan. Hello. Nathan. He, yeah, Nathan. This is Nathan. This is part of his prize for coming second in the Exmoor, I want to say, youth chef competition. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think it's that. Well done. So we're going to do a whole meal. We haven't done a video like this before, but we're going to do a starter, main and the side in one video. We're replicating the <laughs> menu that Nathan did during the competition in a takeaway style, whereas he did it in his own style. We just thought it was a nice play on what he what he's done, and I'll show the pictures of what he's done up on the screen now. But we'll yes. get on with the cooking. So we have about 10 king prawns here. They're de-veined and de-shelled. Exactly. So there's like a boo sack that goes down the back. We've taken that out because it can be gritty. Yeah, and you always want to use fresh prawns, as in raw. We always get people go, um, sesame seeds fell off the top. That's because you've used cooked prawns and they don't, they don't stick as well. You can get them to stick using cooked prawns, but you need to make a really, really, really fine paste. Whereas raw prawns, they'll stick every time and you won't get the problem with them. So if you ever find that, just check your packet. Because I have had a lot of people argue with me, going, no, I used raw prawns. And I said, just take a photo of the packet and send it to me. And it says cooked on the front. So just if they're cold in the fridge, just check they say raw and not cooked. Into the blender, we're going to put the prawns. And to that we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. And we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And two teaspoons of potato starch. You can use corn flour instead of potato starch, but, but potato starch is more chemically stable. Going to add a pinch of salt to that as well. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon. And the same amount of MSG as there is salt. Lastly, well, you crack an egg in. Right now it's blend. Yeah, press down. <laughs> That looks about perfect. So you don't want it completely smooth. You would want some texture in there. A lot of takeaways will just blend it till it is a, a, a uniform pulp. That's fine. But we just like a little bit of texture. So we're literally just going to spread this paste onto the bread. Bread. Thank you for the word, man. As our wonderful assistant Nathan is doing. You could put it on as thick as or as um, thin as you like. There we go. Perfect. We've got some sesame seeds here. There's about 100 grams. And we're just going to put the bread. Uh, what's the word? Paste side down, press on it a little bit. What that does, it secures the sesame seeds in the paste. And that's perfect. Yeah. And we're going to cut it into triangles just because cutting it into squares isn't cricket for corn toast, is it? Very good. And that's it. And then you just repeat the process till it's all done. And the takeaway, they will just stack them on top of each other exactly like that, freeze them because they just pull apart. Yes. So now we're going to. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say potato starch, but it's obviously not potato starch. So, so yeah. Potato starch, isn't it? That's true, <laughs> so I wouldn't be wrong. We're gonna fry them off in vegetable oil at 180 degrees C. Yeah, and then we're gonna turn the temperature down. You want the oil to be hot when they go in, because that seals the outside and stops the oil from getting in and making the prawn toast oily. oily. Yeah. yeah, we don't want oil sponges, we want prawn toast. <laughs> so now we're up to 180 degrees C and we're just gonna pop Put the- Put the sesame seed first. Yeah, sesame seed to side down, down first. Yeah. And then I'm going to drop the temperature to stop the bread from burning. Especially important if you're um, frying from frozen. And then we're going to let that sit for about 30, 40 seconds and check. Yeah. Nice. You want to do them in the order as they go in because then it allows them to cook all evenly rather than one going in and then being turned before it's ready. They are perfectly done. So we're going to give them 10 more, 15 more seconds on the tops and then we're going to take them out. Crisp them up a bit. Mm -hmm. and we're just going to put them on paper towel to uh, drain. So we're going to do crispy beef now. What we've got here is sliced beef. You can have it as thick as thin as you want. I like my crispy beef quite thick, just because you can taste beef then. Yeah. I don't know about you. You might want. <laughs> Some people like it thin. That's absolutely fine. If that's what you like, that's what you like. But I definitely like to taste. No, I'm eating beef when I'm eating beef. <laughs> <laughs> what I've done here is that that might look a bit anemic. But that's because that has been soaked three or four times in salt water. And what that does, that draws out the red pigment. That, if you don't take it out, can burn 
and go bitter. 99% of the time when someone says they've replicated a recipe and the beef is a bit bitter, it's because they haven't done the soaking process. And then into here, what do we have? We have six tablespoons of potato starch, one quarter teaspoon of salt, pepper and MSG. Yeah, and we've just mixed that all up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the first coat of the beef. Really get it in there, don't be afraid. So we're just gonna shake the excess off and put it back into the bowl it was in. So we're just adding one egg white to that and we're gonna mix that all up. Get the single bits of beef and just whack it into there. It's all right. If it sticks, that's it's, it's absolutely fine because when you come to flour it the second time, it will loosen up. And then even if it does stick then, you can knock them off each other when it's in the fryer. Yeah, with pan. a spatula. Yeah. Not, is that not that's a aggressive spatula, spatula ma. <laughs> yeah, with a spatula. <laughs> Forgot to say there's about 200 grams of beef and that's top side beef. You can use actually any cut of beef. If you want to be really fancy and use fillet, by all means you can. It's just waste. a waste. It's a waste. <laughs> but I mean, you can do it, exactly. But we, we don't want to tell you you can't do something when you can. Nathan used rump. rump in his cook, which is fantastic. Good cut, nice and cheap. That is perfect. Yeah. So, well done. That's ready to fry now. All right, now I can wash this off my hands. Yes, you can. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is fry the beef and we're gonna do the first fry, let it stand for 20 minutes and then fry it again. What that does, it dries the outside of the batter out and makes it crispier. Just get a little bit at a time and then place it in gently so it doesn't splash. Perfect, perfect. If you don't have the time to do the double frying process, you can literally just whack this on a really high temperature and let it dry because you want that beef to be dried out inside to give it that crunchy texture. Okay, so now it's ready, we're going to take it out and allow it to drain. Yeah, tap, 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 yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. So to finish the crispy beef off, we've got to make what? A uh, sweet and sour sauce. Yeah, this is just a quick, basic version. A lot of takeaways, we'll actually do it this style. You've seen our, like our generations old version, which is completely different. This is literally just quick fast food version, which does the job, so. We're gonna teach you how to do that today. Well, actually, Neff's gonna teach you how to do this today. Here it is. Yeah. So we're gonna add 400 milliliters of water, 100 milliliters of double concentration orange squash, and 150 milliliters of white vinegar. Yeah. Followed by six tablespoons of ketchup. Finally, 150 grams of sugar. And we're gonna bring all of that to a boil and let it simmer for two or three minutes. If you want it bright red, you can add food coloring but you don't have to. I mean, in our takeaways, we never put the food colouring in. So we're gonna be making the sauce for the crispy beef now. So there are how many? Okay, so right now we're heating up two tablespoons of vegetable oil till it's hot. Now what we're gonna do is add the carrots in and uh, let them brown off. This shouldn't take too long with a hot wok. Just make sure it is hot and not cold. Yeah, exactly. Right, now we're going to add in the rehydrated garlic granules. And you're going to want to add half a third teaspoon of MSG and the same of salt. And we want to brown that MSG off. Nathan's doing a wonderful job of turning this for us. Anyone would think I came second in a competition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you want to add your hoisin sauce, one and a half teaspoons of, and one tablespoon of ketchup. You want to cook the ketchup off because it will change the flavour profile. Now we're going to add 200 ml of the sweet and sour sauce we just made and three tablespoons of sugar. Yeah, there's a lot of sugar, but it's fast food. You're not eating this every day. Everything, well, every nearly minute. everything in moderation. Uh, we're now going to reduce it down into the syrup. And you add your chilies at the end, otherwise you make pepper spray. Isn't that what that like, tastes like? Yeah, oh yeah. It's not actual pepper spray, it's just really hot in the mouth and you end up coughing. We're just going to put a drop of Soy, and this is literally for colour, nothing other than colour. And now you can add your chilies chili. and the chilli flakes. These are quite hot chilli flakes, so I apologise if you can't eat. No, 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 I just, I just thought about that then. Okay, that's good. So now that's reduced down to a nice thick syrup, we're going to add the beef and just coat that. Just coat it all up in there. So we're just going to garnish with some sesame seeds and some chives. Personally, I don't I don't need the sesame seeds on the top. I think chive, yes. the chives, yes. yeah, definitely, but not the sesame seeds. Nice, good work. So in go what? Um, yeah. In go the onion, and we're gonna brown these up a little bit. When they're browning, 
Yeah. Right now. Yeah. In go your noodles. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take the onions off the base, allow the noodles to spread out a little bit, and then just let them sit for literally 10, 15 seconds. And that's going to give them the char flavor at the base. Right, so now we're going to add a third teaspoon of MSG and a, also a third teaspoon of salt. Just need to catch a little bit, so we're going to cook that for about, how long would you say, 20, 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah. give or take. Yeah. Hot, fast. Yeah. And then we're going to add about two tablespoons of dark soy. Not tablespoons, teaspoons. Yeah. And now we're going to add the bean sprouts. You always add bean sprouts last so they keep their nice fresh crunch and colour. And then just stir them in. These will take 20 seconds with that. You just want to get the heat through them and they're done. Just keep flicking it. So the bean sprouts are nice and vibrant, is it exactly how you want them. Just gonna garnish with some um, spring onions. Spring onions, yeah. Just right on the top in a nice little nest, that's it. Yeah. Perfect. One for luck. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just gonna taste this. As usual. As usual. Go for whichever one you want first, man. Oh, I don't know what, if everyone's doing something different, I'm gonna go for prawn taste. <laughs> That's oh, really good. Thumbs up. That is really good. You did that. Mm hmm. I go chocolate. Mm. Well done, mate. Mm. That needed a thicker layer on the mm. top of it. But the flavour's still there mm. because it was highly seasoned, so. Mm. Mm. That's really good. You can taste the beef. That's quite difficult to get the, um, the flavour, but Nathan's done that really well. He's got that char. I mean, in total, this whole meal is going to feed two to three people. Well, I would munch this all myself, but I would. Realistic, yeah, realistically, two to three people. Well done, mate. That's really good. Yeah, well done. Any, anything else you want to say? Oh, also, we've got a cookery school now, which is chinandchoosecookeryschool.com. So head over to there, check that out. We have a recipe vault on there, which is like our own in-house Patreon thing now. So if you want to support channel, by all means, support by going there. This was brilliant, and I'm really impressed. Well done. Yeah, well done. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Loved it. Thank you very much, Nate. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, I've enjoyed yeah. it a lot. Really fun. Also, here is a copy of our cookbook to give to you. We've signed it and everything. Ah, oh, thank you. So that's just a, a thing. <laughs> free book! Yeah, free book. <laughs> <laughs> right, take care, guys. Happy cooking, happy eating! Goodbye.